And yep. now I want to turn to Martin Brickfield, NMR, for Martin's Scratch Building Corner. Now, I have to say, this is going to be a little longer than Martin normally takes, but this is the last time we're going to see Martin until September because he won't be doing one next week. He won't be doing one on the 31st because the 31st is when we introduce all of the winners for our scholarship. And that's going to probably take uh, so much time, that show, that we won't have time for some of our regular uh, uh, segments. So this pretty well clears up what, what uh, Martin needs to do to, uh, to take some time off and uh, kind of goof off from building. So Martin, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> off from building. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered how I managed to stay ahead of you? On it? <laughs> wow. I need, a, I need a month off just to get back ahead of you. <laughs> or two. Anywho's. So, yeah, we're going right to the end point tonight. We're going to go through uh, probably, I don't know, 150% more than my normal slide length just to wrap things up, sort of, probably. So here's where we left off last week. We got a box with a uh, front and some scribbling and some framing and what have you, and some holes for window and doors and basic rectangular box. Not too fancy, not too complicated. And yeah, we had an addition. So I, I kind of neglected that last week, but you know, we put the addition together. It's just, board and batten from my guest northeastern a lot of the same uh, balsa framing on the inside some 132 sheet on the top for a roof and some framing around the bottom as well okay so we, we put things together here there's a lot here going on uh so i've added a foundation that's uh, uh out of my own molds, that's uh, some dental stone material foundation that's been scavenged from other things and copies made and use a four in hand to shape it and get it, get the corners to join together. And we'll come back to painting about it later. Uh, there's a front deck that's just some leftover stained coffee stirs. Everybody's familiar with coffee stirs. They stain up real nice. Uh, particularly if you uh, slop all different types of stain on them. And they're kind of, a, they're actually a birch. So they're kind of hard. They're not like basswood. So they're a little challenging. Uh, some front steps. Uh, the addition's been tacked on. It's uh, up on steps, up, up on pillars, posts. Decided to keep this off the ground, not on a foundation. I mean, you know, you need a place for raccoons to live in the hot days <laughs> right now. Um, the front facade, well, we've got all kinds of extra little pieces of wood added on here. There's a piece of quarter round at the top. There's another piece of quarter round. There's some other pieces of trim quarter round, other uh, shapes. Uh, this is a piece of trim that came out of an old Ambroid Pennsylvania Railroad X23 kit. I just happen to have a section of that left in my leftovers box. Just apply that over that one strip that I left bare. So we've got a, a little bit more ornate uh, front here, not just plain clabbered and flat spots. And you can see the uh, at the main roof on more one thirty second uh, scribe siding. The addition is tacked on. When I say tacked on, that's just goo and some CA slap them together, hold tight for as long as it takes, which is only a matter of seconds, and it's not coming back off. The only mistake I made there was I should have painted the foundation before I did it. It makes it a little more interesting to get in there with a paintbrush, but it can be done. And around back, well, we got some steps. You can see the foundation stones. Uh, one thing that drives me crazy, all these kits, you see the front, the front facade is all ornate and everything, but the back is just a plain blank sheet of wood, and which is completely unnatural in every way possible. It had to have something there. 
So I've added a different size of a scribe siding, 30 second thick scribe siding. You put a piece of trim piece up there at the top, that quarter round in the front, and then there's a top cap, the same width as that. That's HO one by something that added up to the right width. Could have added actually overhang a little bit. It might've made it more interesting front and back. A little bit of trim wood around the front, keep the rain off, some trim around underneath the roof here in the back. Well, we splash some paint on. And I don't know what this is. It's a blue of some sort. Uh, it's poly scale. And uh, one of the things I've learned over the years is uh, you want a good stiff brush for slopping a lot of paint on fast, particularly when it's clabbered, getting it into all the joinery and uh, overhang pieces. And even when you think you've got it painted, you flip it over and you find out you've got a whole bunch of skips anyhow, but the, a good stiff brush that you can really push the paint around with really helps a lot. And you get down to the edges, it's, uh, you want to be a little more careful with it, but, you know, whoop, let's back up. Oh, let's go forward then. And you can see over here, our uh, posts that the additions on there are a different color. I decided we might as well paint those green. There's a reason to paint them green. Eventually we'll see why. And some of the step, this is green underneath the framing of the steps. And you paint the, all the rest of the house, the so building, this lovely color of blue. Get a little sloppy on it, but it's not gonna matter because we're gonna put a roof over that 132nd sheet uh, uh, basswood anyhow, so it won't matter. And here's why we're using that green. We gotta ma make, match the windows and the doors and the, and the shutters. So we have some quick paint job here, two or three coats of the, I think this is poly scale, but it could have been floquil. I see there, I have fond memories of the aroma uh, wafting through the uh, shop. And uh, these, are, these are glazed with some acetate, a little bit of, but this being the Tishi window, it came with a laser cut piece of glazing and some window treatment material. So a little trimming, but it fits just, it drops right in and fits nicely. So you don't have to bother. Of course, you want to get a little, just a little bit of black paint for the doorknobs. So you can actually see them. Okay, we put the roof on. We got builders and scale, raised metal seam roofing. This isn't fun to work with. It's actual, you know, it's aluminum, it's actual metal. Uh, I put that down with goo and some CA, you know, overlap, lock it into the seams where the standing seams uh, match up. Save one of them for the roof cap. Pop a hole through, this is a piece of brass. Tubing, some brass sheet bent over, soldered together. There's your smoke jack. Shove it through the hole with some goo and some CA. Done. This is just paper, tar paper roof. Well, use the printed paper and it works very nicely. And then you can see from the other side. And, you know, I like to leave a lot of dimples and things in it, it gives a little more character. Okay, we go around front. We've got some signage. This is the barber shop. And we've added the town barber. Yeah, and uh, were you wearing that pink bow tie when you came in? Uh, as you might see, there's a little bit of red stuff on the uh, apron of our barber. That's real blood. That's mine. Uh, somewhere along the way, I cut myself. So I said, well, I'm not going to waste that. It's uh, precious. It was supposed to be on the inside. We'll use that and put that right on the apron. So uh, our, our I, I don't recommend our uh, barber. His name is on the door. For those who can't read it, it's Alan Bordillion Trahane, Trahern, sorry, Trahern. You may or may not recognize the name. The sign was just scavenged off the internet, printed out, trimmed down, slapped on some 132nd uh, sheet basswood and uh, a little dab of goo and it's on the wall and we just go around the sides and you can see there's the window for the uh addition this uh foundation stone there's about seven different colors of gray two different colors of green and i think uh, a little bit of aged concrete and a little bit of dirt 
all poly scale colors. So I, I start I start with the darkest to work to the lightest and use less of each as I get lighter and just go keep going around and around until I get done. It's a little tedious. It's a little challenging working underneath this edition, but probably for the best to do it that way. They go around back and you can see there's a couple extra little colors, little splurges of a little different lighting on here. Give it a little bit more character. And go around more and we're done until September. So there you go. I hope we're on schedule or not. doesn't really matter because I'm done anyhow. Martin, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. What's the total cost you got in that building? Uh, I don't know, ten dollars. Uh, add add the cost of the figure. Artista figures are expensive. That's they're, they're, that's that's probably eight dollars right there if you had to buy it. I don't. I came out of one of the boxes I have of, of figures, but the rest of it, it's all DIY. You know, uh, leftover bits and pieces from other, you know, the Grant Line parts. I mean, if you had to buy Grant Line, if you had to buy Grant Line packs, you you know. Pack a do pack of two different doors and a pack of two different windows. That could cost you 15 bucks right there just for that. But the wood's not expensive. But then again, most of the wood on that is leftovers. And I buy my wood in bulk. So I'm, I'm buying 20 sheets of three foot long clabbered. That 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 lasts for a while. But over time, the cost of that is pretty cheap. It's not very much money. You stretch that out over eight or nine or 20 buildings. It goes down in price pretty fast per building. Well, let's say you're a new modeler and you don't have an inventory. You don't buy oh. bulk yet. So you might have, what, 50, 60 bucks max? Oh, yeah, at the most. So, and from, so from one side of the coin for a no-scale building, you scratch build it. Uh, you come up with something really unique that nobody else is going to build. And you got 50, 60 bucks invested. Yeah. Or, or you buy a museum quality kit like Tom just built and he's building now for us. And you may have $300 invested. And it just goes to show the variety, in my opinion, of what an O scaler, what an HO scaler, what a S scaler, what an N scaler can do in this hobby. You know, it's all uh, it's all about how much work you want to do and how much effort you want to put into finding the materials and buying them and so forth, rather than having a manufacturer do all of that work for you and put it in a nicely packaged box. Well, uh, it all adds up. Well, that's part of it. The other part is I don't always know exactly where I'm going when I'm building something. I have an idea in my mind or an eye, you know, in my mind's eye. And um, I have the freedom to do whatever I want with it as I'm doing it. And if, if I want to make a change along the way, well, easily done. There are no rules. There's no instructions. I'm making it up as I go. Um, if, I, if I make up uh, drawings, it's after I'm done. So... <laughs> Kind of shows you the variety of decisions model railroaders have to make, and that's uh, what that to me is what makes our hobby so much fun. Martin, thank you so much. Now you can go goof off for six weeks or so, and you know try to figure out what else you're going to do. If you could see my workbench, you'd know that's not happening. <laughs> hey, I appreciate everything you're doing. Thanks so much, Martin. Okay.